Welcome to this episode of the Teacher Transition Podcast. I'm so excited to have Sharon Limegrover on our, yeah, in our episode today. Sharon, thanks so much for being willing to come on and share your story. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, Sharon, you don't even know, <clears throat> sorry, you don't know why this episode is special to me in a unique way. So I just wanted to start us off with that and then hop into your story. But Sharon, you are actually the first person who ever joined our course. Oh, oh. And, yeah. And I think, I mean, I'm probably, it might sound funny, but I'm probably always going to remember this. Like we launched, we opened the course, right? So people could join. And I remember where I was when I checked my email and I was, I was with a friend and I was like, Hey, look, like someone actually joined. And, and then obviously there were more people, but anyway, there was something so special about that. Not only that, you were the first person to land a job. Oh, wow. How, How perfect. Huh? Yeah. And so anyway, I think there's a lot to be said about action takers as I call them. Yeah. Actually do something to improve their path and, and create a future path. So anyway, so it, it, you're, you hold a very special place. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, yeah. In my experience of doing all this. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for sharing that. That was nice. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it really wasn't that long after joining the course. It was within three months that you landed your role. Is that correct? Well, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember when did, uh, yeah, don't, when did, when did you start? Was it that fast? I guess it, I don't know. It just, you know, this year is just such a blur. <laughs> It's so much like anything else. It, yes. I mean, so much, there's been so many blessings out of it and then so many sad things out of it too. So it's hard to even calculate the time frame. I mean, for a year, seems like two years, you know, it's like, or three, you know, it's just, I can't even think back to January to, to we're already to December. Right. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, so when did you start? And that would give me a reference. When did we start this course? The oh man, I was, was it was it January? Was it okay? So yeah, I guess it was. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it was about. It was. I started April first. So. Great. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's hear kind of your story. If I remember correctly, you've worked at multiple schools, and in multiple roles. Is that right? Yeah, well, I actually the last the last um, school that I was at, um, I was there for 10 years. And um, then prior to that was 15. So I have 15 years of teaching experience. Um, and I've also been an adjunct instructor for like 20 years. So I stayed home with my kids for about 14 years, and then went and got a uh, alternative teacher certification, and started teaching um, technology, I was teaching elementary school. Um, I was the computer lab teacher where the, the classes would rotate through and, and have their computer class. And I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the, the little ones and uh, it was good. And then uh, one day my son came to visit me and said something to me because I was repeating things over and over and over again. And he says, mom, I don't know how you do that every day. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lot. Um, and right about that exact same time was when I was being pursued for an early college high school position as, um, as a technology facilitator, um, I would, I would had my master's or I think I was working on my master's at the time and they needed someone to teach a college class to high schoolers because the whole purpose of the, uh, early college high school program is for students to, um, graduate with a high school degree and an associate's degree at the end wow. um, of their four years. So I was teaching ninth and 10th graders um, the college course that I had been teaching as an adjunct for so many years and helping them get the technology skills, Microsoft Office, um, Word, Excel, Access, PowerPoint. And, um, and that way they got three college credit hours when they finished my course. That's so, amazing. And yeah, so, so that was fun. Yeah, and so clear that your path was a perfect fit for that role yeah. and position. Yes, yes, it, it, that, yes, it was kind of crazy. Um, so I did that for 10 years. And then the last couple of years, um, my beloved principal, who was also my neighbor, <laughs> um, retired. 
and um, we got some new administration and the school just wasn't the same. Um, the teachers were a big part of the program. We had input on everything. We were just a big, um, it was our school. And when the administration changed, it became their school. Hmm. And we just taught there. And I didn't, I wasn't happy. I was so unhappy. And that's when I turned and started searching on the internet. What do teachers, what can teachers do, you know, other than teach? And um, I landed on instructional design and I thought, well, that sounds interesting. And started doing more and more research and reading and searching and found you. And, and I was like, okay, I have to sign up for this course. I have to learn more about this. So great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and you are a really great example. I know multiple course members have have learned from your example about while being in the course, having your resume out there. Because I, I loved how you, you know, I don't want to say stumbled across the job. It, you didn't even apply I for it. They applied to I you. Didn't. Tell us a little bit yes. about that for those that aren't yes. familiar with your story. So I will say that it's really important to put skills, even as you're developing them, on a resume. Um, so I had a resume out there in Career Builder, and um, I had put some of the skills. Um, fortunately, I did know D2L, which is the learning management system for um, the college that I'm teaching for. And um, that was one hit, but the other hits were that I put some storyline in there and I put Addy on there. And, you know, I had, as I was going through, I went ahead and updated those things because I figured, well, I'm learning them. Uh, I can, I can say that I somewhat know them. And I think that helped tremendously. So I did get a phone call just kind of out of the blue. Um, it was that weird transition time where we didn't go back to school after spring break. And um, I got the phone call. And um, so I prepared for an interview thinking it was an interview and it wasn't, it was just, it was almost like, we need you and we need you now. And I'm, and so I, I know someone, I just read this the other day and I don't know if it was a posting on your um, Facebook site as, about imposter syndrome. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I do feel like that. And I, I want people to know, I, I, I really thought about this a lot yesterday. Um, that I wanted to talk to you about was that there are times when I hit the imposter syndrome and I think, wow, I don't know a lot of this stuff. But then I stop and I say, yeah, I do. Like I've either developed the skills or I need to reach back into what I know and just tie it into what needs to happen right now. Um, so it's, it's, I forget to give myself enough credit um, because I can do the job. And I think I'm doing it pretty well. Been there um, since April and December 1st, they hired me on full time because I was a contract um, yeah. person. Excellent. They just needed people immediately because of the switch of all professors to an online course. Um, yeah. And it was crazy, but so I love it. Love That's it. so great for those who don't, for people who are listening to this and don't know where you're working, tell them just a little bit about that. Like you mentioned professors. Tell, yeah. Explain. Oh, yeah. So I'm working for our local um, community college. Um, I don't, I yeah. mean, does it matter if I name no. it? It's, no, okay. that's it. That's so great. It's, yeah. it's Lone Star College um, Community College System. It's huge. Um, I actually, it's kind of funny. I've been there for 20 years. It's just an adjunct. I teach one class a semester and um, I'm really even on campus. So what I've learned about this college is it's huge. It's gotten so much bigger than it used to be. And I did not realize how many different buildings, how many different places they have, but working with professors. So when I say that, um, what I do on a daily basis, I assume that's what you want me yeah. to Yeah, I know a lot cover. of people want to know, like, what's a day in the life actually like for this job? Yeah. So um, each day, um, I have a calendar, and they can book appointments with me if they need help with their courses. Right now, as we end the semester, a lot of them are going to start needing um, uh, wrapping up and 
ending their their class and how to download grades and all that. In fact, I just ran a training this last week on how to do that step by step of how to finish out your grade book, how to download your grade book, how to package every all the different um, eye contracts, your attendance, all of that together because they want it in one PDF and send in to the to different departments. So I do and, that. And just for a little context on that, when you're making that training for the professors, are you, I assume you're not presenting that live, you're recording that training to teach the professors. And then I actually somewhere? do it live. I do it live, but one of the other instructional technologists joined me and he recorded. Sometimes I record on uh, the WebEx and then this one he particularly recorded and then he'll go make it all fancy and nice and add a title and all that. And then we have an area uh, um, that all these videos go into like a video um, repository, is that the correct word? Um, that contains all the videos that we do in our trainings and stuff. So that if someone didn't make the training, they can go back and watch it. I do a lot of, um, the college wants me to I probably do a training every two weeks on different things and I get the choice of what I want to train on. Sometimes they say, they'll tell me, oh, we, you might want to think about doing a training on how to set up a great book or, and, and again, this is all in your, uh, the learning management system that we use is D2L. Um, and for teachers, so, who, what is a learning management system or an LMS? You know, it's going to be, for those listening, it's Think of where you record your grades as a teacher or attendance, or mm -hmm. if you, if your students submit an assignment to you online, it's that kind of online portal and repository for all those things. So yes, an LMS and the course helps people learn about all of that and more. So yeah, keep going. Yes. And they put, yes. And they can put their assignments in there, um, quizzes, um, discussion boards, all kinds of things like that. Perfect. So, um, so yeah, so I'll develop trainings like that. And then going back to my teaching um, over the course of 10 years, especially at the, at, uh, the early college program, I, um, I had the students for a whole year. Well, in a college class, it would be a semester course, but because they're young and it's harder. And um, when I first started, the students didn't have the technology that they do now at home. Like with, they can get Microsoft Office for free through Lone Star um, and they couldn't before. So everything they did had to be done at school on a school computer. So I took them for a whole year. And so I had, a, because I had them for a whole year, I could teach them all kinds of different technology tools or play with different things like Canva, which is one of my favorites. Canva is a, a digital um, graphic, very rich, but easy to use graphic software. Um, we played with quizzes. Um, what else did I use? So many different apps. And we would create projects that they would do a presentation at the very end of the year using and, and incorporate a lot of the things that I taught them into like a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so now I've pulled that over to the university side and um, have been showing a lot of the professors how you can use this in your course. And they get very excited because it just adds a, another step. I mean, you can only do so much in a learning management system, but if you go ahead and pull in some apps from the outside, um, it makes it more engaging. That's so, oh, I love hearing so. about like your specific role. Sometimes, I get really excited about technology that can do different things or apps. And, and I think that's what led me into kind of ed tech training. You know, I wanted to present at conferences and share these things to make people's mm -hmm. lives easier and to make learning more engaging and things like that. But we, for, for teachers out there listening to this, if they are that type, you know, they, if they love ed tech, if they love sharing it with others, would you say, that is a good indicator or what things would you say you would love working at a university as an instructional designer if you know how could they know if they're a good match for that well i think the biggest thing that i've realized is as much as i liked working with students i got more um joy out of helping the teachers 
um, I, for, for me to introduce a tool that they could use in their classroom brought me greater joy. And I realized that's what I want to do. And so, like you were saying, the ed tech or, you know, just the training part of it. And I did try it many times to get into that, but they're so, especially with the, at the district, but there's very few people. And um, once they're in that spot, they don't leave. So all I could do was train at my school and which was fine. I mean, I was training teachers and bringing that in, but I wasn't always available to help them when they needed help because I had a full teaching load. Um, but I knew that that's what helped, brought me joy. And so when I help professors in their courses, um, they're so thankful. They're so, um, they just, they, it's so sweet. They just tell me how much um, I've helped them, how grateful they are, and thank you for taking your time. And I'm like, but that's, that's what my job is now. So that joy of, you know, knowing that I'm doing a job that makes helps them, makes them grateful, you know, in, in the point that I'm not trying to say, and I want them to be grateful that I helped them. That's not what I meant. Um, it's just that that makes me feel good that yeah, I was a able significant to help them. contribution. Yes. And, and so I, I just really, really enjoy it. Um, I do like the designing part. I'll get into that if you want me to. I, I yeah. did get, I do. I, that's the majority of my day. Um, I will say that I have a lot of appointments. I'm helping, I'm helping professors with their courses. We're troubleshooting issues. We're fixing things. The next part of my job, well, and then the training. So I set up trainings throughout the month and I turn those in and they get advertised. I also run an open lab um, where I'm online. And um, even though if nobody comes, I'm still working on other things, but uh, I'm available. So they can pop in and pop out. Really? Yes, yeah, it's just kind of like, like hours. Yes, yes. Great. Okay. So I do that. And um, so I still am home. Um, we have not returned to the building. In fact, I don't even know where my office is really? because I've been online ever, yeah. ever since. But it seems like this is a really good fit. Um, I don't know. I, in fact, it's funny because I was thinking this morning before I talked to you, what does the job look like prior to us being all online? You know, yeah. what, did it, what did the IDs that were at the college do on a regular basis, because all I know is how to do it virtually. Yeah. But I will say that a lot of them have told me it works so much better this way. Um, yeah. They say that um, the professors would come in and sit down with you next to you and you're both trying to work on a computer together. Whereas virtually they're on their computer, I'm on mine. They can either share their screen or I share my screen. And so, you know, either way we can help each other instead of trying to stand over their shoulder and help them. That's so great. that's what I, that's what I've heard is works really well to be that's virtual. And then the last thing that um, is probably the most exciting thing. And I know that this comes from a lot of, this is where a lot of what I learned from you comes into play. Um, and I don't know how this happened. And this is where the imposter syndrome comes in. Like I worry, I'm like, how did I get chosen to do this? But I'm actually the lead on redeveloping the online teaching certification. So when a professor comes into the college and to teach for the first time, they have to go through D2L, the learning management system, and they go through all this training themselves on how to teach using that system. And it was not laid out very well. In fact, I knew I had gone through it. Um, I didn't learn a lot from it. And I've been, you know, but I've been on it for 10 years. So I just kind of managed. I'd never created my own course. Um, my course was always given to me by my department. I was just allowed to tr tweak it and make it my own. So I personally went through it again to, and learned how to create a new um, course from the beginning to the end. And now that's what I'm doing is uh, myself and another instructional designer who can also came in in April. Um, 
with the two of us are working on re revamping the entire online teaching certification, which will be used throughout the whole college system. So it's like, a, it's a lot of eyes on it. And so I go back to look at, I, I have a binder with your um, papers and things in there. And so I'm always kind of going back and referencing and just seeing if I'm on track and following the whole Addy model, but this is my very first project and I'm the lead. <laughs> That's so. amazing. And I love, yeah. that. I love that you've been in the job for months and you're still using your course workbook, you know? Oh That's yes. Yes. Great. So, wow. You have hit on so many things that are really, really significant. Oh, everything from imposter syndrome to how significant, like the joy that you're experiencing in your role. Wow. Where do I even begin with so many things that we could dive into? I guess, tell us a little bit about, about the joy factor and the significance you, how many students do you think you're influencing through influencing the number of professors that you're influencing? Yeah, I will. I, I never even really thought about that, but like right now I'm working with one professor and um, he's an older gentleman and, you know, he's a, probably an amazing professor. I mean, I've never taken his class, obviously, but he struggles with the technology side of it. And so, yeah, for me to be able to help him get his grade book in order to tie his assignments to the grade book properly or his discussions to the grade book properly. Um, he had lots of quizzes that none of the grades were feeding over to the to the grade book for these students. So we've been I, I work with him probably two and three times a week trying to get everything straightened up. Um, and then I just talked to him this week about let me help you get set up for next semester. <laughs> let's yeah. let's get this all laid out early and so that it flows so much better than it has this last semester but yeah I never thought about the influence of it the impact on them I just know that I'm helping the professors that's so great on a good course I'm so glad to hear that a lot of teachers are afraid that when they are no longer a classroom teacher that they won't really be working with people you know they're thinking oh, I'm just going to be in a cubicle can you open kind of some perspective on that no, in fact, it's funny because you say that because I am such a people person and have been my whole life. And so I thought, wow, what is it? What's it going to look like to walk upstairs and go into a bedroom and work at a desk every day? Um, but I don't ever feel alone. I have appointments. I'm meeting with people all the time. People pop into that open lab. We also run Microsoft Teams, which is a chat. Um, feature through Microsoft. So all the other instructional designers are there. And when I hit an issue or have a question, sometimes I'll just say, hold on to, you know, this professor and I will message on my other screen to my um, fellow coworkers. And they just, if they're there, they start replying. Sometimes they'll jump in the, the uh, session, the WebEx session with me and work it out. And so I'm never alone. Like we have each other. I mean, of course, I am alone in this room, but I never feel like I'm alone. I'm always talking and, and helping. And so, and we have meetings, you know, so it's, it's been wonderful. I don't mind when the time comes to return to the building. I mean, again, because I am such a people person, but I have been fine working virtually too. It's been a great experience. And I could stay just like this and not have an issue either. Good. I'm so, so glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear yeah. that. It's really fulfilling. If, if you yes. could go back maybe a year or yeah, if you could go back and give yourself advice a year ago or any perspective, what, what would you say to yourself? So, well, I would definitely say the same. I would probably do the same thing I'm doing now or what I did a year ago is begin to do that research. When you know you're not happy, it's time to find something else. And I am older. I don't feel older, but I am older in the work world. I mean, I'm probably, you know, I'm looking at maybe eight years or so for retirement. And so um, 
I think that's a big thing that I want to say is don't ever give up on your dream. Like it's not too late to change. Um, because when you're not happy, don't, I would not have wanted to suffer for another eight years and not be happy. That's not life, you know, <laughs> that's not worth it. So do that research, find, find someone like you or whatever path or interest you have and begin to do that training. I mean, I'm so thankful that I found your course. I loved that we met on Saturday mornings and 10 o'clock, I would go, I'm going to be upstairs. Nobody bothered me. Cause I think, um, no, I guess nobody was home at that time. I think all my kids are gone, but I would tell my husband, I'm going upstairs and I'll be back in an hour. And I would join your sessions on Saturday mornings and take notes and, and watch, you know, your recordings from other people. And so, and I know you've built that up quite a bit since, um, since January. Yeah, um, it's been, it's been really good. And then when I had my baby, we stopped doing Saturdays for a while and we're going to be having something starting soon so that people can get like live support again. It yeah, was, that was just nice. It was just nice to be able to talk to you and listen to you. I think that made a big difference than to be, again, the people person in me needed a person to also bounce things off of, to listen to, to, to interact with, um, so I think that made a huge difference. Oh, that's um, great. Learning is just, kind of a social experience in some ways, you know what I mean? If it's, and if it's learning from something recorded or whatnot, like that's definitely an option. I love that things can be on demand, but it is nice to be able to get personalized, real live, you know, support and mm -hmm. just to feel supported. So I'm really excited that my little one is now old enough that I can get a little more sleep and be able to offer something like that soon. So like, oh, well, that's good. I hope so. Cause that really helped a lot. It did. And I will also say that, um, it's funny, write goals down. Um, my, uh, daughter-in-law has been trying to, she's becoming kind of a business coach and she's been on me about, I, I, I not been on me. I shouldn't say that. I've been working with her um, because there's some things that I would like to get better at, even at this stage of my life. And so we were talking about writing goals down and I went and found a planner that I had bought in January. And then by March, things had just, you know, spiraled out of control and I put it away and I just pulled it out. I was going to have it here, but I pulled it out and I went back and I would just love to read it to you. Can I yeah, grab it? Go real for quick? it. Absolutely. You bet. So I went back and found what I had written in February because it talked about facing your fears and um, just laying out your goals. And this was until I even you landed your job. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I said, um, I wrote down, it says, t um, talk yourself into it. And so um, a couple of them that I had said um, was you can change careers and be successful. You can walk away from a job you no longer life, like you can enjoy life. And then it says, my first step, plan to pitch myself as a confident instructional designer. That's what I wrote in February. So that just felt so good to, to have put it on paper. So it was written, even if I had put it away, it, it was still up here, I guess, because it's not until I went back and looked at it that I was like, oh, look what I wrote and look what I've done. And so I did it. That's so great. I really feel so, like when we write down goals or kind of vision statements and things, it kind of writes it inside of us. Yeah. Mm, that's yeah. really good. Um, I'd love to get your perspective and insight about what you were mentioning about retirement. So you were saying you were eight years away from having oh. a full retirement. Is that right? I hope so. And and I think so as a teacher, you worry about that because you're in the teacher retirement system. Um at least in Texas, it's Texas retirement system. And um, my worry was, well, at first I was like, you know what, I can't even worry about it. I'm so unhappy. I'll figure something else out. But if you go into the college system, it feeds, continues to feed into the Texas retirement system. So I'm actually going to continue where I left off. So I, and, and really left off means I stopped in August and now it feeds again 
as of December. So there's only a very small lapse of time that I was not feeding into my retirement. Um, so I'll be okay. You know, I can still retire in the eight years. Um, it was something I worried about, but not enough to make me not change careers. I knew I would figure something else out, um, you know, start investing somewhere else or, um, you know, whatever it took, but it wasn't worth staying right. in a situation. And I, I know I've read a lot of the teachers are scared. Um, and that was one of their fears is like, what do I do? You know, how do I change and leave this and move on? But I, it's, it's doable. It's doable. Yeah. But if you do move into a university type situation, it just worked out that I, it was it's an easy transition for Good. retirement. I know that is going to help a lot of people, like a lot of people who've, who've just heard that. So, okay. so thank God. Yeah. yeah. Um, a teacher in our course also shared this last week in our group that she said, do I need to wait to apply, you know, until after my portfolio is finished? No. I, I think your insights <laughs> shared about that were so, so perfect. So that's really great. Yeah. Another shared in our kind of open group that anyone can be in. They shared, she said, I'm so afraid of not having summer breaks and not being able to, you know, be with one of my kids on a summer break. Can you tell us any insight you have about, you know, personal time off or any worries or concerns? What would you say to someone in those circumstances worrying about, well, days off or what about life flexibility or summer break? Yeah, I actually thought about that a lot too, because I do enjoy my summers off. Um, and I did worry about that. And I don't have my, I, I get it. I think one of the reasons that I went into teaching or went and got an alternative teacher certification was because I had five children and I couldn't figure out what I could do. I needed to be with them. So as I was leaving that teaching world and coming into this job, and I thought, well, how am I going to handle my summers off? Not having, you know, maybe not much of a Christmas break or whatever. But I will say at the university level, a lot of those breaks are the same. There's a spring break. There's two weeks off in December. Um, the summer, um, I, I just breezed right through it. Um, we have Fridays off. So we work longer days and we have Fridays off. So it's a three-day weekend. So that's nice. That's really and, nice. Um, and then of course being virtual, as long as it, it that made a huge difference. Cause even in the summer, I just took my computer. Um, my sister needed, asked for us to come and manage her little, um, I'll call it a ranch um, in, in North Texas. She wanted to take a vacation, but she has miniature donkeys and three dogs and chickens and she just can't leave them for a week wow. so she said since you're working virtually do you think you could come and so I did and it was wonderful it was almost like a vacation even though I was still working so that was the, that's a plus about you know at least virtual and I think a lot of jobs they're finding that this job is works beautifully seamlessly virtually yeah. I mean there may be a chance that you land an instructional designer job, but never leave home. And granted, yes, it's tough if you have little kids around, but I'm working with people who have, I've seen one of the gentlemen that I work with, his son's right behind him on a computer doing class. <laughs> so right. he's been able to do it or he'll say, hey, I've got to, I got to take a lunch break. I, I need to go feed my, you know, go make lunch for my children. And, right. and I think his wife's at home too, but it's just, they've, they've, tag team or whatever so it's not you figure it out if you know many people have figured that out I know it's a it's a it's a loss to lose a whole summer off but I, I was I was fine I never even thought about it not once that I didn't have the summer off because I was happy <laughs> I think that was it I mean, it goes without saying that that's incredibly valuable, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's like, we don't even need to say that. It's just an obvious, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I'm so glad to hear that. And it's interesting for me to see the different kind of flexibility that different roles have, different jobs have, different instructional designers have. Like you mentioned at the university level, you get kind of the same breaks, you know, the same mm-hmm. holidays, same days off and plus Fridays off three day weekend. That's nice. I do see with some instructional designers that, you know, are freelancing or working from, from home as their own, their own thing. Some of them, especially with young kids, you know, they'll, they'll get their assignment or, or know like, okay, here's what I need to work on. I'm going to mm-hmm. make these PowerPoints while my kids are asleep, or I'm going to yeah. design this or write this resource or make this learning training manual or these write these documents work on these spreadsheets whatever it is I'll just do that you know while my kid's napping or or I'll set aside a few hours where so-and-so is watching the kids and and be able to work on it so I love seeing there are so many different you know roles and Mm -hmm. opportunities at the university level I know you and I talked in the past about how in my opinion, like the observation I have of a lot of university positions is you're working with wonderful people, mm-hmm. educated demographic, oftentimes kind, you know, anyway, just any insights for those out there who want, are curious about instructional design or who are going into it, but who are wondering what it's like, you know, at a university as far as colleagues go. Um, yeah, you're, well, you, you, you nailed it. It's just, they are, um, they know their material and they're good at what they know, but they're not good at what you know. And so they, for the most part, know that they need help in that side. So I certainly never tell them how to teach their course, but I suggest how to make it better. And, um, I, I have a wonderful, wonderful art teacher. Um, she's Japanese and she's so beautiful. And she always will do this, you know, to me on the, on the, on the WebEx. And when she thanks me and we end the, the call and her course is laid out, not how I would lay it out. Um, and so that, that's a time that you have to weigh if that's what they're comfortable with. She's not comfortable having gone online. How do you teach art online? Like that's tough, but she's managed. And so I'm not going to mess her course up. I'm going to support what she has there. And so that's, that's a change. That's where you have to decide what's most important, where they, where they are right now and leave it because that's what they can handle. And that's a big thing too, is just deciding because, you know, that's not that's not the proper way to run an online course but it's working for her and I'm not going to mess it up for her too um but they're always like I said they're always very grateful because they know that you have that knowledge that they don't have and so and I do see a lot of teachers think like well but teaching it's it's so natural like everyone would know how to do this and and there is the technology aspect obviously with what you're working with but also the side of how should I just teach effectively? And, and teachers mm-hmm. think like, no, this is just, you know, no, no skills that I have or all that great or, or different than what everyone has that ability, you know, pedagogy, instructional methods, mm-hmm. direct instruction, guided instruction, like those things are not what other people know. So definitely value. Yes. Yes. And you, and you do, you take, you, you, you do have to step back and just kind of think where they are. They know their material, but doing it in a classroom versus an online environment are two different things. And so you kind of have to make some suggestions. And I have one English teacher who, or professor who comes to me quite often. I think she's good. I haven't heard from her in a while, but she would check in with me every week and say, okay, can you look at this week, this next week's, does it flow? Does it make sense? Is this good for the students? And so it was her material, but she just wanted to see if how I, viewed it and so that was that was nice um but again that's I love doing that I love hearing that and because of this year every teacher is now experienced with how to teach effectively online I know yeah. isn't it crazy skill set so crazy. yeah yes it's so crazy yeah. and they 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 a lot of them say I didn't sign up for this this isn't what I wanted but what's going to come out of it is 
even if they do return to the classes, they're still going to have to provide their material in an online environment regardless. I, I see that from here on out. Their grade books, the, the, um, you know, the um, leadership has said all grades have to be in a learning management system regardless. It, it's just that's the way it's going to be. So even if they go back to the classroom and try to return to their old ways, it's not going to be their old ways. And so I think this career, this um, career path is going to continue to grow um, regardless, regardless what the new norm is. It's just that we have found that this is, this is going to be the way of the world is so much of it virtually, so much of it taught um, or presented virtually. So, yeah. So true. And so many job openings like currently right now with so much going online. So Sharon, mm -hmm. your insights have been invaluable. I know oh, thank so you. many people are really going to appreciate it. So thanks so much for sharing your path. Oh, and your thank story. you.